Welcome again to Araniade. Guess who got new shelves? I've got an expo coming up in about seven days now, give or take, and I am very excited. That being said, I had to make some room. I've got a lot to work with right now. Um, having these empty shelves is actually bugging me a lot, so expect to have an unboxing video in about a week or two, give or take. Back on topic, today's episode will be all about the various defenses that tarantulas exhibit. There are a few of them, and not all tarantulas exhibit all of them. I will give examples for each that each species tends to be pretty famous for. Without further ado, let's jump right into the most common one called the threat posture. This is the first line of defense that most tarantulas exhibit because it makes them look big, scary, and venomous. See, they'll actually rear up their first pair or two of legs and show off those fangs that they like to use so much. The vast majority of species actually have a big red spot right where their mouth is so that when they do rear up it looks like a giant gaping mouth that in the animal kingdom says stay away from me, I bite. Given that this uses up almost no resources for the tarantula, this is almost always the first line of defense that a tarantula will exhibit. If you're trying to get in the cage and they give you one of these, maybe come back later? They're not in the mood. Remember how I said that they like to show off those fangs and the threat posture? Well, surprise, spiders can bite. All spiders are capable of biting, that's what the fangs are there for. That being said, all tarantulas are also venomous. They are not poisonous. Poison is ingested. Venom is injected. There is a difference. All tarantulas are venomous. The venom potency ranges wildly from a bite that you would barely even notice, like from Gramostola rosea, all the way up to a debilitating pain from a Heteroscodra maculata. You don't want to get bit by one of those things. As bad as the venom may feel, in the long run, it's typically harmless. It's not going to cause any long-term side effects. However, that's not to say that a child getting bitten or a very old person getting bitten wouldn't result in very bad consequences. I can absolutely see a young child dying from one of these bites. Although there are no confirmed reports of a human dying from a tarantula bite, get bit by one of these bad ones and tell me how you feel about that. Luckily for the bitten, it does not necessarily mean that you got a wet bite. A wet bite means that venom was actually injected. You see, venom is the tarantula's most valuable resource. It's how they kill prey, it's how they defend themselves, all of it. They're not just going to throw it away. Typically speaking, they're going to do a dry bite first. What's a dry bite, you might ask? Think about it. A dry bite is when no venom or very little venom is injected. You will get the mechanical damage of the fangs themselves, but you won't get the chemical damage of the venom. I'm going to end this one with a fun fact. Fangs are actually highly specialized limbs. Millions of years ago, before these became arachnids, those front two fangs were actually limbs. They were decapods, meaning they had ten legs. That's where it came from. They evolved so much that it turned into a defense and feeding mechanism. I'm about to drop some terminology on you. Urticating setae. See, urticating is itchy, irritation. Setae is the hair of the tarantula. I'll actually be using the term hair from here on out because it is much easier to say. Although, do remember that word, Cite, because I will be using it again later. Quick rundown. There are two general classifications of tarantula. Old World, Asia, Africa, that area, and then New World, the Americas, North and South America. Generally speaking, of course, only New World tarantulas have this hair that will make you itch. Luckily, once again generally speaking, the venom on the New World tarantulas is usually much less than their Old World counterparts. They evolved to go along with the hair it worked out for them versus the venom that worked out for the Old World species. Now here's where it gets very interesting. See, the urticating hair actually varies in effectiveness depending on their locality. If their primary predator is, say, a bird, the hair is evolved to affect a bird more than, say, a reptile. 
some of the hair is actually aimed towards other invertebrates that would prey on tarantulas. Wasps are a very common one. That being said, you'll often run into tarantulas that will kick hair and nothing really happens because their primary predator was not a mammal like yourself. You might get a little bit of itchy, but you'll say, not much of a defense. They weren't trying to defend against you. They were trying to defend against a bird, a wasp, something along those lines. Speaking of reactions, they range all the way from barely noticing you even got hair on you, all the way to, oh god, it burns. A common species, Chromatopelma sinio pubescens, green bottle blue, they do kick hair very readily. They do kick hair. I personally have no reaction to it whatsoever. I have physically seen hair land on me and I didn't even feel it. Meanwhile, on the other end of the spectrum, there are folks to stare me. You do not want to get hair on you. It burns. It feels like a welt. It is absolutely terrible. When I clean my adult female Theraphos Stermi's cage, I wear long gloves, I wear a long shirt, I wear a mask, I wear goggles. It's very painful. You will be itching for days and days if you get hair on you from that thing. This specific type of hair is only found on the abdomen. The tarantula exclusively uses its back pair of legs to rapidly kick off any hair that it has left. Speaking of hair that's left, no, it does not grow back. It is not hair like yours or mine. That's why we call it setae and not technically hair. That's why on so many of these neural tarantulas, they actually have a bald spot right on their butt. Not very attractive, but hey, it's what it is. One last thing, if you were to look at a single urticating setae under a microscope, it actually looks like barbed wire. It looks nasty. They actually look wildly different from species to species, once again, because they're defending themselves against different types of animals, but it's very interesting to see. Next up is a lesser known defense. It is actually a passive defense. It does no actual damage to the attacker. Hissing. Yes, tarantulas are very capable of hissing. At least some of them are. Not all of them are capable of producing this sound, but the ones that do use it quite readily. The term hissing is actually called stridulation, and it's the exact same process that a cricket uses to chirp. Specialized setae, the hairs, if you recall, are rubbed together to create that hissing or chirping or buzzing sound that you hear so often in insects. For tarantulas, it will be in one of two places, either between the two fangs, that's why they would rub their fangs together to make this sound, or on their hind legs that they would, once again, rub together to make the sound. As I said, this does no damage whatsoever to the attacker, obviously, but it's meant to just scare them off. What does this hissing sound like, you might be asking? Well, one of the lovely users over at arachnoboards.com, Shane Shack, offered to give me this video. Now, you might have noticed they weren't exactly attacking each other. That was a mating video that was Theraphosa Stearmy, both of them, obviously, and they hiss when they feel like it, like I said before. Moving on, we have poop. That's right, tarantulas have indeed weaponized poop. A select few species of tarantula have the capability of turning on right around, away from their attacker, pointing their abdomens up, and spraying some feces on them. However, it goes way beyond just being plain rude and disrespectful. Number one, just like the hissing, it could be a passive defense that it just scares off the attacker. It would startle me if I walked up to a tarantula and that happened. And number two, some basic chemistry here, feces is basic, the opposite of acidic. It still burns, especially if you get it in your eyes. If they spray some feces and it gets in the predator's eyes, they're going to feel it and they're going to run away. When they spray the feces, it almost looks like... Actually, hold on. Look at this. Hold on. We are going to look at this. Look. Look at this. This is a avicularia, and do you see all the feces on the side of the enclosure? It's not like I haven't cleaned this thing. This has been over the course of about a week. This is her defense mechanism. There she is. Very proud of what she's been doing to this beautiful enclosure. Last, although certainly not least in my book, are the barbs. This is my favorite one. A very select few species demonstrate specialized setae, once again the hairs, on the 
back of their hind legs usually comes in a row. We have this wonderful picture here by Tarantula1995 from, once again, Arachnoboards. This is of a Hapalopus species, Columbia Large, and you can actually see the row of the thick barbed setae on their hind legs. Just like the poop, the tarantula will bravely turn away from their attacker and actually kick. The species that in my experience demonstrates this the most is M. robustum. It is a burrowing species, beautiful, beautiful species, I highly recommend it, that will actively turn and wildly kick their legs. The setae on them are quite large relative to other species, which might explain why they use it so readily. These barbs are almost as hard as fangs, which you can imagine would hurt quite a bit if that ended up nailing a predator in the face. And there we go. Those are all the primary defenses that a tarantula may exhibit. Once again, no single species has all of these, at least not to my knowledge. They usually have two or three of them that they use readily. If you have any questions about anything I went over today, please feel free to ask in the comments. I will always reply, I promise. As always, huge shout out to all the members at arachnoboards.com. They helped me put this episode together. As you can imagine, I put up a couple pictures and the video. That's all from them. I had a great time filming this one. So for now, that's it for tonight. This has been Raniade. I have been Oilers K, and I will see you next time.